Majora's Mask. Chapter 52. Swan Song. This time, Tattle was with him. The giant stood far away. The sky was a dream-like shade of blue, a radiant veil for the waterfalls pouring from the clouds. Link stood on the same column as always, which served as a grounding presence amidst the surreal prison. The large, oddly-shaped creature remained in the center of the dream, surrounded by pillars of water and a foggy haze. It sang the same majestic song, but it sounds sadder than normal, the hero thought. He turned to Tattle, who seemed to have aged thirty years in the past thirty minutes. Her wide eyes weren't capable of distinguishing dream from reality. The masked salesman, however, wasn't with them. Where is he? Link asked. He touched Georg's mask while holding him, and now he was gone. Wait. Waiting for us, Tattle said distantly. Like the monkeys did. Link didn't have time to consider that, as just then, the giant's song recaptured his attention. They want me to join, he knew. So he equipped his ocarina and played along. The sadness in the giant's notes became a part of him with every note, and as soon as it started, the melody ended. Please, Tattle said, breaking their silence and flying closer to the distant god. Please... Help us! We want you to lend us your power! Her voice was thick with grief. We're losing! We're not winning this fight! If you don't help us soon, something terrible will happen. The giant's reply was deep and melodic. Help our friend. The last giant? Link thought. He wasn't sure. But there was no time to ask. As its voice dissipated into the ethereal realm's haze, the dream did too. Its final beautiful call was rich with longing for something lost long ago. The sound of the ocean returned first. The weight of the masked salesman was next, and Link almost dropped him. Georg's mask spun at his feet, landing flatly on the rock floor. They were on the small outcrop of land behind Zor Hall. The ocean foamed as it dashed across the dark rock. On the night of the second day, the waves were bigger and stronger. The moon was the clear culprit, hanging far behind them and still omnipresent in its terror. Only the final day's sunrise remained as twilight greeted them. Great Bay Temple's curse had been lifted. The mechanical wonder now hung storm-free on the horizon. A giant turtle partially blocked its view, treading water exactly where they departed a day ago. Two palm trees swaying on his back as he watched Link appear with the dying man in his arms. The masked salesman was ghastly pale, and his cloak was soaked with as much water as blood. He stirred feebly beneath the all-night mask. Tettle twinkled beside them both, wielding an expression equal parts grim and exhausted. You have returned, the turtle said in its booming, godly voice. It felt out of place given their clearly traumatized and grievously wounded party. Which means I must soon return to my rest. As the ancients dictated long ago, a great evil may haunt still these lands, but I know I am leaving its fate in capable hands. He paused, looking to Zora Hall behind them. Although I may stick around long enough to hear Lulu's voice again, Surely the gods can permit such a luxury. Tattle remained grief-stricken in the face of his levity. How? she asked. You show up and give us a ride? And now you're just leaving? You think we're capable hands? Link's holding a dead man in his arms, and they're both marked by the demon's curse. We haven't freed a single temple yet without almost dying. Whoever these ancient ones or gods are, surely their talents are wasted on an aquatic carriage surface with a goofy voice. 
The turtle merely looked back at her with an oblivious calm. I imagine your cynicism and wit usually serve you well, young fairy. But your friend's needs currently outweigh the utility of criticizing the divine. The masked salesman moaned as if in confirmation. Link shifted the dying man's weight in his arms. He's right, Link said. Daddle, can you watch the masked salesman while I try to find a boat? Something tells me this turtle won't take us back to the beach. Tattle took a moment to blink her frustration away. Right. Can't we just play the Song of Time? We don't have a Pona yet, Link said. And even if we did, the masked salesman might not teleport with us. Remember when I was with Epona last time I played the song? She came back with us, but she didn't follow us to the doors. I'm not risking the same thing with him since he's dying. Tattle paused as if caught somewhere between annoyance and appreciation for Link's level-headedness. Go find a boat then, I'll watch him. Link laid the sorcerer down gently as he sprinted into Zora Hall. The first Zora he passed was unfamiliar, and she watched him with suspicion. Link wondered what she'd heard about him. The boy with the demon eyes, he thought. The boy possessed by dark magic. The boy who killed Mikau and tried to kill Lulu. The skin changer and dark wizard. Or was he the hero sent to save them? He remembered what the masked salesman had said when introducing himself under the tower. I was known known in Hyrule Hyrule as the man man of many many faces, faces. the man man without a face, face. the dealer of faces, the masked masked thief, thief. the dark dark sorcerer. sorcerer. It's It's amazing amazing how how much much easier easier people people fear you when they don't know your name. And the Zoras knew Link's name at least. He wondered if that made things better. The waterfall was still loud and pristine behind the ornate clam stage. He rounded its surrounding pool and ignored the other Zoras as he knocked on Lulu's door. Lulu, it's me, the boy said. She answered wearing a different dress, though it still made room for her beautiful wing-like fins to remain fully stretched. Link, her black eyes searched him for answers. Did you do it? Was that flash of white light you? Yes, I... Save the temple, he said. But I need your help. My friend is dying. I need a boat. Do you mean your fairy? She stepped out of her room and closed the door behind her. What about the moon? Did you stop it? Where... where's Evan? Link's stomach lurched, and he looked away. I'm sorry. Evan didn't make it. Lulu didn't appear to react at all to the news. Her eyes held only weariness. There's only room for so much grief in a person's body. Link knew from experience. Eventually, Evan's absence would wriggle its way into her heart. For now, her mind was a numb stone in a whirlwind of change. But I still need your help, Link said. One last time. My friend is going to die too, unless we get him to Clocktown, and he can't swim. Lulu took a moment to reply, as if searching his face for secrets or deceit. Please, Link continued. He threw caution to the wind, his heart hammered in his chest while thinking of the masked salesman's condition. A second could make the difference. Lulu's wide black eyes threatened to break Link's resolve, but eventually she nodded. Okay, she said distantly. Link felt nauseous. He traumatized this community relentlessly, but still was extracting them from more. She'll be dead anyways after the moon falls, he thought. But that thought made his blood run cold. What was happening to him? I'm sorry, Link said. I tried to say Evan, I really did. A tear fell from Lulu's eye, even as she remained catatonic. A boat... You can find one over there. She pointed by the shop. You can have it. As Link thanked her and left, he wondered why shades in a realm of shadows would bother shedding tears. Such grief would surely rend mere illusions into nothing. But Lulu would endure these losses for the rest of her days. Tattle watched the waves dash violently against the shore, The sea was an angry mix of foam and dark blue, 
uncaring that a curse had been lifted from its waters. Its greatest threat, the moon, had yet to be vanquished. The fairy watched as the turtle became a dot on the horizon. It had never answered her question. Not that I expected any different, she thought. Tuttle hated the numbness coursing through her. Once a veil shot the mask salesman, something in her had snapped. She conjured images of the bloodbath on Georg's platform, but for the first time since meeting Link, the trauma didn't make her feel sad, angry, and hopeless. Instead, she felt nothing. It was an emotional void so vast she feared it would swallow her whole. Below her, the mask salesman coughed. He remained huddled in a ball with his mask on. The injured man turned away from the shore when sea foam splashed his hair. His mask's painted eyes eventually found Tattle, and she saw a smile form behind its grated mouth. Tattle only stared back. Do you remember the talk we had in that cave? The sorcerer asked. When I first kidnapped you. His voice was strained. Tattle wondered how uncomfortable this rocky outcrop was. Yes, she said. Except it wasn't much of a conversation. I was stuffed in a bottle and you kept telling me to shut up. The mask salesman's demeanor fell and he curled further into his ball. Tuttle swallowed her discomfort. You told me you would kill me if I asked about the shadow you tried to bring out of Termina again. The mask salesman looked back at the raging ocean. Tuttle joined him. <laughs> If you and Link succeed, he said, what will you do after, if Link stays in Termina? He'll eventually become a shadow and forget who he is, and you can't follow him to Hyrule. Tattle remembered the argument she'd had with Link. I don't know. I... Highly doubt we'll have to worry about that anyways. We'll probably both be dead before the end of it all. The mask salesman shifted, or twitched. Tattle couldn't tell. He squirmed less and less, and the fairy realized he could simply slip away any second. For good. This isn't the worst place to die. Tattle decided, looking at Great Bay's chaotic twilight. Despite the water's intensity, it was beautiful. The waves hadn't reached the monstrous height they would on the final night. The sorcerer maintained his will to keep breathing. Did... did you know the person who shot me? Yes, Tuttle said. She was the leader of the pirate's fortress. Link had a chance to kill her on the first day, but he didn't. Clearly mercy is a luxury we can't afford. You showed me mercy? And now you're dying anyways. Tattle wondered if the masked salesman really believed he would live to see another day. She wondered if Link still believed that was a possibility. Even if that mask could keep the sorcerer tethered to reality, only a monster would force a thoughtless pile of flesh to keep blinking. The ensuing stretch of silence made Tattle uncomfortable. If I were in his boots, I wouldn't want to die in silence, she thought. So she forced out the question simmering in her thoughts. Is this how you thought you would die? <laughs> what? I mean, shot in the back by someone you never met. Whenever I think about dying, I hope I'll go out peacefully, or calmly, maybe even heroically. I try not to think about dying too much, because that energy's better spent staying alive, but I can't help it sometimes. She paused. I'm asking if you've thought about how you want to die before. He took several minutes to respond. Since you are not currently on your deathbed, you should answer first. What should a peaceful death look like for you? The numbness in Tattle grew. If I'm Navi, then you've already killed me. If I'm the first Tattle, then the Skull Kid has already killed me. It was no wonder she felt so dead, and that the tears wouldn't fall. Am I just going to fade away? Is that what it means to be a shadow? I can't even remember my time with Tail before the Skull Kid anymore. If I live long enough, 
Will I forget this adventure? I know what I am, but I don't understand it. I don't understand how everything I feel could be so fake. The masked salesman turned over to face her again. I think I was wrong, he said. Tattle furrowed her brow. Excuse me? I believe there's more to this realm than darkness. I think I was wrong. Rain began pattering lightly on the stone. Why do you say that? She asked. Because if Termina was nothing but darkness, I... He struggled to find the words. Link and two Zoras interrupted them. They exited Zora Hall carrying a small rowboat. They placed the wooden vessel into the stormy sea, holding it against the shore as Link returned to Tattle and the masked salesman. A sprinkle became a downpour. The rain slid against Link's blood-stained face. We have to hurry, he said, his blue eyes resolute. Tattle gulped. He thinks we can save him still, she thought. Fear penetrated her numbness. She worried that Link wouldn't be capable of taking another loss. The masked salesman lay at the boat's bottom, staring at the gray sky. Link's back faced their destination as he rode toward Great Bay's shore. The large stone sculpture atop Zora Hall faded with each stroke, and their boat rocked haphazardly on the tumultuous waters. Link kept his head down, while Tattle rested beside him on his seat. The masked salesman already looked like a corpse. His blood-crusted robes were wet with ocean water again, and the all-night mask covered any life that might have still graced his cheeks. He was as stiff as a board, while Great Bay's gentle beach became chaos around them. Link dared a look behind to see that the hooked research laboratory was closer. Almost there, he thought. No one had said anything on the journey, even as the boat finally reached land. The waves threatened to flip the whole thing, so he carefully and quickly carried the masked salesman once it was shallow enough to stand. Even then, the water attacked them both, and Link's boots sank deep into the wet sand long after emerging from the water. He ignored the discomfort everywhere on his body. There was no time to think about the long-term consequences of the salt water, bruising, and blood. Link kept walking. The masked salesman kept clinging to life from his arms and Tattle kept flying beside them both. It was a short walk to the fisherman's white-walled compound. Epona's neighs were audible even before she saw him. She was still outside. But it's raining so hard, Link thought. Anger simmered within him. True, it had only been raining for thirty minutes, but his horse deserved better. Epona found him immediately when he entered the yard. Her next neigh was excited, even as she fought against the onslaught of water to keep her eyes open, she was still tethered nearby, so Link walked to unfasten her, until the fisherman interrupted them. Hey! Hey! Link spotted him in the door to his hut, still bare-chested despite the rain. This time, however, he was armed. A loaded crossbow was pointed across the yard at his visitors. What do you think you're doing? The fisherman asked. Link narrowed his eyes. Taking my horse back. I'm the boy who asked you to watch Epona a day and a half ago. The rain continued turning the fisherman's yard into a mud pit. He stood just far enough within his home to stay dry, even as he pointed a weapon at Link, Tattle, and the masked salesman. The fisherman eyed them suspiciously from above his arrow's pointed, glistening tip. I didn't recognize you with the rain, he said, remaining in the doorway. I thought you were a thief. Good thing you came to your senses, Link said, unable to restrain his anger, or you would be dead by now. Tattle balked, spinning to her face her companion. The boy waited for her to say something, but she didn't. His fairy merely gave him a look of abject horror. I don't have time for this, he thought. He turned to the masked salesman in his arms. Do you think you can sit up? The sorcerer nodded weakly. He used Epona as support to stand while Link unfastened her. Epona tried nuzzling Link's hands in a greeting, but the boy did not have time for that. Oh, oh, we'll catch up later, 
he said, whispering. He managed one pat on her wet head before lifting the salesman onto his steed's back. Link joined from the front, allowing the sorcerer to hold him from behind. The sorcerer was far too big to ride comfortably on the young mare, but she seemed thankfully up to the challenge of holding them both. You all going back into town? The fisherman asked. Link didn't answer, steering Epona to leave the compound. The fisherman called after them anyway. If you if you see my good-for-nothing son Slarp there, you give him three good smacks on the head for me, will you? Link looked at the shoreline as he passed. It was filled with only terrible memories. He and Tattle had arrived at Great Bay with a fresh slate, finally reunited and convinced to make this adventure the best one yet. Everything had fallen apart, as it always did. They'd freed the giant, but now they were leaving it with more death and darkness in their hearts. A realm of shadows. Link looked behind at the man who told him that, now clinging to him for survival. The masked salesman's legs and hands shook with the effort of remaining upright. The boy kicked his heels into Ipona, and then they ran through the nighttime rain for Clocktown. Lulu swam with all the grace and prowess of her ancestors. The rain could not touch her as she soared beneath the storm's wrath. Beneath the waves, the full beauty of her fins became might, allowing her to glide through the bay as a goddess would. Her voice echoed with the conversation she'd had with Tijo mere moments ago. Lulu, what's wrong? He'd asked as Lulu tentatively stepped into his room. Evan's dead too. She'd replied. Oh, I don't know. The boy came back from the temple with a dying man in his arms, but not Evan. He said Evan died, but I think he freed the temple. I... And what about the moon? Tija's final question had been the true death sentence. Did it matter that the lying boy and his shadow-laced tongue may have freed Great Temple Bay from its curse? Did Evan and Mikal's murders have any meaning if the moon still pulverized them. No, Lulu thought, as the seabed passed like a never-ending screen below her. Only one thing could make their deaths matter. Eventually, Lulu reached a wooden deck and pulled herself onto it. She climbed the ladder to the second platform and opened the thick metal sphere's door. An elderly man noticed her from his desk, and his eyes widened in shock. He set down his instruments and stood to greet her, but Lulu did not pay him any mind. She stared at the giant fish tank. Seven young tadpoles swam about in its waters. The babies danced around playfully, sporting fins that would one day take on their mother's wing-like form. She could tell they'd grown so much since hatching. Lulu ran across the room and pressed her face against the tank's glass, smiling as her tears finally came. <sighs> They're alive. She said, her voice shaking. My babies. He didn't lie about that. Lulu slid along the length of the glass and fell to its bottom. Two of the young Soras swam to greet her from behind the barrier, long tails wagging as their eyes shone an inch from hers. You're here, she said. Her fingers lightly stroked the glass. Remember this moment, she thought. It's the last happy one you'll ever have. Epona's hooves thundered through the wet grass. Link leaned forward to ride them directly into the rain. Tattle trailed behind and the masked salesman's grip on his back weakened. Somehow, the sorcerer remained in the saddle, but he wouldn't for much longer. Come on, Epona! Link said as her hooves traveled over the western gate stone staircase. We're almost there! She buzzed her lips in agreement. The party traveled up the staircase and past the two fountains on either side, Clocktown's massive wall soon loomed over them, obscuring most of the clock tower from their angle. The floor eventually leveled out to herald the gate. Link slowed Epona down while the endless downpour continued around them. Surprisingly, a guard stood outside the western entrance. Link furrowed his brow. The guards had never stood outside Clocktown before. The gate's ceiling protected him from the rain, but there was no obvious reason for him to defy protocol. Cycles changed, Link realized. Link felt the masked salesman stir behind him, trying to see for himself. The armored guard 
remained standing resolutely as if to block off the entrance. He thrust his spear into the ground intimidatingly. I'm afraid I can't let you in. The guard spoke as if he had a god's will in his chest. But he's hurt, Link said, shouting over the rain. My friend, we just want to pass inside and get him help. The guard looked up to the boy confidently, apparently unbothered by this adventurer's mount or his weapons. I'm under orders to grant no one admittance to Clocktown without exceptions. But he's going to die, Link said. He felt his stomach's knot unfurl itself into anger. It was cold and hard, seeping its way through the hero's veins. No, he thought. He can't keep us out. I won't let him. He tried and failed to steady his voice. We've gone in and out of town freely the entire time we've been here, and now that I ride here with a dying man who needs help, I can't answer? The mayor and his wife are dead. Link balked. He turned to Tattle as if for an explanation, but she looked just as confused. How is that possible? His fairy asked. They were ripped to shreds. Their entire residence looks like the inside of a slaughterhouse. Murder doesn't even begin to do it justice. They were ravaged like vermin until all that remained was a pile of gore, and the murderer is nowhere to be found. The city is in a panic. We're not allowing anyone in or out. Link's rage, cold, thick tendrils slithering up his throat, did not care. The gods in all their cruelty had erased the helpless, scared boy that fell victim to tragedy. He would remain stone in the face of this trial. Nothing would break him. Not ever again. We're not the murderers, Link said. And my friend is going to die if you deny us entry. I'm sorry, I can't. But you're a guard. You're supposed to protect the people. That's exactly what I'm doing. The clock town guard aimed his spear at Epona. The hero's steed reared back in fear. Now go! Link bared his teeth, drawing his gilded sword and channeling all his fury into his eyes. You will let us pass! No! The guard did not back down. Threatening a man of the law will land you in prison for life, boy. I am not a child, Link said. You have no idea who you're dealing with. I will kill you. Link. The boy turned. Surprisingly, the masked salesman had spoken. Exerting himself to speak left him breathless, but still he found more words. Don't. Let's just find shelter. Link looked back at the guard whose spear was still brandished. Listen to your friend, boy. Link gripped his sword tighter. We could kill him, the hero thought. We could run through the town and reach the doors before they stop us. Get back to Hyrule. But if the town truly was in a panic, maybe there'd be more resistance than normal. Let's go, the sorcerer said. Tettle chimed in her agreement. He's right, Link. Let's leave. When Link glanced at his fairy, he was surprised to see fear in her eyes. She was afraid of him, and this time there was no purple-eyed demon to blame. The anger in the hero's body retreated. She doesn't understand, he realized. This is the only way. We can't give up, Link said. We can still fix this. There's no fixing me. The mask salesman said, wincing. Tattle turned away from him. I know where to go. Follow me. Link took a moment longer to direct Epona away from the guard. He refused to make eye contact again, and soon the onslaught of rain washed out the cruel officer from view. Link followed Tattle. The mask salesman bent himself back down again, leaning against Link. His grip was even weaker. We can't let that pirate win, the boy thought. He let her live. He'd done that. And this was the consequence. Tattle had discouraged him from stealing and killing, but being the good guy was no longer a luxury they could afford. Freeing the giants and saving the world was all that mattered. So what if they had to step on a few people to get there? Then, he felt the weak fingers at his sides again. <gasps> the masked salesman considered me a pawn once. Link thought. 
the sacrifice for the greater good. Link winced. <sighs> He's evil, and I'm not. I've never done anything half as bad as him. Yet, the hero remembered he would have slit the masked salesman's throat if Tattle hadn't intervened, saving a veil the trouble. He wasn't sure what to make of that now. Link followed Tattle as she veered away from the town walls. She led them into Termina Field, southward. Where are we going? Kome and Kotake? That was a very long ride, and he wasn't sure the witches could heal the sorcerer. Even their potions had needed the light magic in Link's scar to work. The masked salesman had none. Link stopped Epona when he recognized their destination. The overturned hollow log. Tattle flew inside, which was shelter enough from the rain. But that's all it was. Shelter. Are we giving up then? The boy led Epona to its entrance but did not pass inside. He looked back to the masked salesman, who still seemed attentive despite his condition. Link gulped. Even from behind the sorcerer's mask, he could see acceptance in his face. It's over then, the boy thought. He surrendered with a heavy heart, slipping from his saddle and helping the masked salesman down too. The sorcerer almost fell, grimacing as the hero caught him. Link led both he and Epona inside. His steed had to bend her head a little, but thankfully she could fit inside while unmounted. Link froze when he saw something else in the log. Tattle stared at it too, her brow wrinkled in sorrow. A corpse in a white dress lay against the log's wall. She was very young. A sheath of tangled dark hair covered her face. Her dress was bloodstained, and she was all alone. The masked salesman looked terrified as he spotted her from Link's shoulder. He knows he'll be joining her soon, the boy thought. Epona eventually overcame her fear of the corpse to enter fully. The rain was a loud reminder of why they needed to stay inside. Link led the masked salesman away from the dead girl and laid him against another portion of the wooden wall. As soon as he let go, the masked salesman laid himself onto the grass and shriveled into a ball. He shook terribly. <laughs> I'm so cold, he said. There was nothing Link could do to fix that. He remained knelt before the fallen masked salesman with his fairy. Epona stood behind them, cold, wet, and clearly irritated Link hadn't led her somewhere warmer. Eventually, she laid down to find what comfort she could. Link wasn't sure what to say, as the masked salesman lay there shivering. He allowed his mind to wander back to Clock Town. Anything was better than silence. Ah... <sighs> Do you have any idea who killed the mayor? He asked. No, he said weakly. Link frowned. It doesn't make sense. The only people evil enough to do something like that and defy the timeline are the Skull Kid and... He trailed off before he finished. Me, the mask salesman said. Then... It must be the imp who's responsible. I don't know, Link said. It could be, but the last time I saw him, Majora was furious with him, and he killed Dark Link. The sorcerer considered that. You saw this when your scar activated at Zora Hall? Link nodded, and the sorcerer laid his head back on the grass. Then... He parted his robes to examine his own curse. His chest was now as pitch black as his robe. The scar had darkened his torso into a perverted midnight of scars and gashes. The masked salesman was a corpse already. Tattle winced, and Link did too. The masked salesman covered his wound and closed his eyes. <laughs> yes. The only thing keeping me alive is this, but... His long, spidery fingers removed the eerie mask and laid it on the grass. His dark eyes were once again revealed, though it was his pale, shrunken face that terrified Link. Why go on living when your body is already gone? 
He coughed horribly, wiping away his smile as soon as it appeared. Blood, dark as tar, came to his lips. Lincoln Tattle watched him for a while. There was nothing they could do to comfort him. The agony seemed short-lived as a deathly calm began to fall over their companion. It's really happening? The masked salesman asked. His voice hardly escaped his purple lips. I've seen so much death in my life, and now it's finally my turn. I was... I was supposed to make up for all the terrible things I did. Link did not have a response. He merely watched the odd confession as the nighttime storm raged around them. The boy's anger had fled, but sadness had not replaced it. He merely felt confused as his old enemy turned acquaintance shared his final words. The masked salesman turned to Link abruptly, eyes bright. Link, I think you can do it. The light magic you have. This realm, I think there's more here than... than j just darkness. Maybe it's not just a realm of shadows, after all. The sorcerer's eyes flickered to Tattle, who watched him sympathetically, yet she held her tongue all the same. <laughs> I didn't want to be a bad person, the masked salesman said. He removed one of his gloves to reveal a ring underneath. It had a red and blue stone woven into its small band. Tears pooled in his eyes as he looked at it. I'm not. I... He paused, as if suddenly remembering something. He reached into his robes and retrieved the Mask of Truth. Its singular red eye was as hypnotic and foreboding as before. I want you to re read me. What? Link asked. I want you to know everything about me, he said, choking on the words. Please, in case there's something I've missed, something I've forgotten, I could help you stop the mask forever, and because... He paused. I want you to know. I want you to know, so you don't make the same mistakes I did. The boy tentatively reached out for the white mask. An uneasy power lurked in its simple, unassuming shape. I'm not sure about this, he said. Please, I want to die, knowing that someone knows who I was, because I've forgotten, and I want someone to remember before, before I'm gone forever. The ring sparkled on the hand offering the mask. Link took the frozen, bewitched face. How do I do it? Link asked. He still didn't know if he should agree. Did he really want to know the past of Zelda's murderer? Did he owe that to someone so cruel? Just look into my eyes and, and listen. He smiled weakly. I was a man before. I promise. I was a man. Link took a deep breath. What do I do? He thought. What will happen to me if I agree? He decided that saying no was impossible. Link put the mask of truth over his face, and he leveled its wooden red eye at the dying man. Eventually, the sorcerer returned its stare. Those dark, watery pools engulfed Link. The sky flashed brighter than he'd ever seen before. He saw a village, a dark forest, a ring, a stone table, a gray shack. Faces suddenly as familiar as the back of his hand. When he saw a tuft of his own red hair, immense hatred rushed through him like a dark river. It was a precipice Link had faced himself, but instead of teetering, he fell. That cold, still waterway was an abyss that silenced his very heart. The black rage 
became the air fueling his lungs. It guided his hands as people became bags of meat, puppets to manipulate and pull apart on a whim. He screamed and screamed and screamed, but the abyss wouldn't let him go, because that thick, swirling mass of darkness was only a mirror, and the red-haired monster disguised as a man loathed no one more than himself. He reached out to stifle his reflection's banshee wail. It was an act of mercy to let it shriek like that, and he would squash its worthless throat like the cockroach it had become. The mirror's glass shattered, blood shone on its jagged edges. He tried to scream his name, but the abyss denied him even that. He had made his sacrifice. Link gasped. The log, the nighttime storm, and the smell of wet grass overwhelmed him as the world returned. He shivered in place as a lifetime of memories buzzed in his mind like an angry wasp. Each was laced with such dread and contempt. Link pulled the mask of truth from his face and threw it. It clattered against the log's wall and fell away. <gasps> Link! Tattle exclaimed, flying to his side. But it all faded, almost as quickly as it came. Link caught his breath, still trembling as he sat up again. <sighs> I'm... I'm okay, he said uncertainly. <clears throat> it's over now. It's done. He paused. Link turned slowly to see the masked salesman lying beside him. The dying man lay feebly in the grass, staring up at Link with concern. His breaths were shallow and labored, and Link saw him in a completely different light. I understand him, the boy thought. Entirely. He'd never comprehended another life as fully as he now grasped the masked salesman. He seemed a child to Link then, abandoned, loathed, and discarded, only to die exactly as he'd feared. But the sorcerer's eyes soon left Link's. The masked salesman looked at Tattle, and he smiled. He gave what might have been a laugh or a final exhale. And then he was still. His last smile faded, and his eyes became dull. His head lolled to the side as the rainstorm continued its eulogy. Link remained trembling beside the mask of truth. Tattle, he said. The masked salesman, he... The boy stammered, his mind still loud with the dead man's past. His name was... Majora. <laughs>